in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am, almighty God. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Brethren, we are here before the Lord Almighty. I need us to lift our voices, raise our voices to him, and call him his names, his wonderful names, his excellent names, his glorious names. None is like him. None was like him. None will ever be like him. Ancient of days, immortal, invisible, almighty God, all-powerful God, all-knowing God, all-sufficient God, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, the possessor of the whole universe, the very present help in trouble. Let us exalt his holy name. Let's bless his holy name. Let us call him his wonderful names, his holy names, glorious in holiness, fearful God, glorious God, loving Father, almighty, King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the one who is the one who was, the one who is to come. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. I need us to take a few prayer points and then we're going to the teaching for this evening. If you look around, you will see a lot of empty seats. We are going to pray to the Lord Almighty. I say, Father, Father in the mighty name of Jesus, let your revival, let your revival spread in this church in the mighty name of the, in our church in our hearts in our homes in our nation father let there be a revival let there be let there be a desire for the world in the mighty name of jesus let there be a desire for the world in the name of jesus father start the revival now the revival for desire for the world in the mighty name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name we pray I want us to take another one for our nation, Nigeria. The Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But this is our own Jerusalem. The prosper that love thee. We are going to ask and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, all over Nigeria, let your peace reign. In the name of Jesus, my God and my Father, let your peace reign all over Nigeria. In every nook and cranny of Nigeria, my God and my Father, let your peace reign. Let your peace reign in the name of Jesus. Father, let your peace reign all over Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And then we take a final one. The, our theme for this month is divine visitation. My prayer for somebody as I pray for myself is that the Lord will visit you in the mighty name of Jesus. So we're going to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, before the end of this month, let me have an encounter with you. Let there be a divine station in my home, in my family, in my household, in our careers, in our businesses, in our health, in our ministries, in our finances. Father, let there be a divine station. Let us encounter you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you. The Bible says where two or more people are gathered, you are there. We believe that you are in our midst because we are more than two, we are more than three. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Father, we have come to feed at your feet. Lord, please give us the word of life. In the name of Jesus, touch our hearts, touch our beings. By reason of this word, let there be transformation in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, blessed Redeemer. Glory, honor, and adoration we give you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the living Jesus. Please, before we sit down, let's move forward and cover the vacant seats in front of us. Please, let's close up the vacant seats. God bless you in the name of Jesus as you obey. Please turn with me to the book of Genesis chapter 18. Genesis 18, verse 1 to 15. Can we have some people to help us read? We need fast readers. Genesis 18, 1 to 15. Then we need a second microphone. Ushers.
and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and bowed himself toward the ground, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort you and comfort your heart. After that, ye shall pass on. But therefore, are ye come to, are ye come to your servant? And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened and, and Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes upon the heat and Abraham ran unto the head and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hasted to dress it and he looked and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and it stood by them under the tree and they did it and they said unto him where is Sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said i will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and lo sarah thy wife shall have a son and sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him now abraham and sarah were old and well stricken in age and it ceased to be with sarah after the manner of women therefore sarah laughed within herself saying after i am worse old shall i have pleasure my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Therefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I shall I of a short bear a child, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Praise the Lord. Our topic for this evening is divine visitation. Praise the Lord. If we look at that passage, many of us, we are very familiar with that passage. So I'll just quickly go through it. Abraham and Sarah had been waiting on God's promise for so many years, 25 years. They had waited on God. But one day, God visited them. And at the end of that day, perhaps Sarah woke up that day unhappy, sad, weeping. But by the time that day ended, the Bible says she laughed. I pray for someone here this evening, the Lord will visit you. Whatever that subject is, whatever the situation is, at the end of it, you will laugh in the mighty name of Jesus. So by way of introduction, when we talk about divine visitation, we are talking about the interface of between God and man. When nature, when the heavens, when divine comes to interface or interact with the created man, then we talk about divine intervention. Oftentimes, what you see is that the heaven comes with mercy to intervene in the affairs of humanity. And then you say divine intervention has happened. For example, if there's anyone who has been tied up for a long time, divine intervention is when God comes and says, please lose him, and the person will be loosed. If there's anyone here today who is tied up for whatever reason, because of the divine intervention tonight, you shall be free in the mighty name of Jesus. Now when God visits, now there are some interesting things about the visitation of God. God does not need your invitation to come and visit you. On his own, he can come. Psalm 115 verse 3 says, can we have it? Psalm 115 verse 3. Done whatsoever Done. he has pleased. Praise the Lord. So he can wake up this morning and decide that I'm going to the house of Mr. Johnson. And Mr. Johnson cannot say, please God, don't come. 
He doesn't need an invitation to come and visit. Praise the living Jesus. So he can choose to come to your house whether with a notice, sometimes he gives notice. And sometimes he does not give any notice. But the reality is that whenever God visits, he leaves an impact, an unforgettable impact. And as he visits as many as he will do tonight, that impact shall be positive in your life in Jesus' name. You will understand why I say shall be positive. Because sometimes when God visits, the impact for some people is also not positive. Praise the Lord. Now we'll have three outlines. The first one is, why does God visit man? Why would God want to leave his throne in heaven to visit a man? Praise the Lord. Whenever God visits man, like I said, there's always a positive impact. So broadly, we can put the reasons he comes to visit man in two categories. The first one is when he comes to visit, he comes to execute judgment. He comes to reprove. He comes to correct. And the second category is that when he comes, by the time he's leaving, that man or woman would have been blessed, thoroughly blessed. Praise the living Jesus. So let us look at the two categories. The first one, when it comes for judgment, let's look at Romans 9.17 and Exodus 9.16. Romans 9.17, Exodus 9.16. Please take it again. For, both of, for the scriptures say that God told Pharaoh, I have appointed you for the very purpose of displaying my power in you, and so that my fame might spread throughout the earth. Praise the Lord. And the passage in Exodus 9:16 is just about the same thing. But when you look at these are quite um, voluminous. Exodus 10, chapter 10. Exodus chapter 11, Exodus chapter 14, he visited Pharaoh, he visited Egypt. And what happened? He visited them with plagues. He visited them with hail, with thunderstorms, with rain, with fire. He visited them with diseases. And at the end of the day, he consumed them in the Red Sea. That's when God visits. He comes visiting to give judgment. Praise the Lord. Also in Genesis chapter 19, verse 1 to 29, we are unable to take it for time, but I'll, I'll talk about it. When God visited the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, he went there to execute judgment. My prayer for you tonight is that your case, even if you have offended God, you will find mercy tonight. In the name of Jesus, so that whenever he visits you, it's not because he has come to execute judgment. It will be for the second category that he has come to bless. Praise the Lord. So let us look at the second category. When he comes to bless, what does he do? Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 to 11. In the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Praise the Lord. If you look at that passage properly, that's probably not the first time God was visiting Adam and Eve. So every now and then he would go visit them and they had fellowship. But on that particular time that God went visiting in the same normal way for fellowship, but Adam and Eve were not ready for that fellowship. I pray if God comes visiting you to fellowship with you, you will not be missing in the mighty name of Jesus. Then in John chapter 14 verse 23, John 14 23, And said unto, the, unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Praise the Lord. When they come to a man, they make abode, they live, they dwell 
the fellowship continuously, eternally, possibly, with man. I pray that will be the level of relationship that you have with Jesus, with God in Jesus' mighty name. The second one is when God visits, salvation takes place. Let's look at Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Praise the Lord. We all know the story around the birth of Jesus Christ. He was in heaven with God the Father and Spirit. But he had to come and visit man. And the reason was simple. Salvation. The reason why you and I are here and are saved is because of that divine visitation. Praise the Lord. I pray also that if you have people around you in your household who are not yet saved, the Lord will visit them tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Another thing that can happen when, God's, when God comes to visit is that there is usually a restoration of anything that you've lost. Praise the Lord. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 18 to 22 and Joel 2, 25 to 27. He had stayed in Jericho. He said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not go? Then the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice the situation of this city is pleasant. As my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water and casting the salt there and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water from it. There shall be no more death or barrenness. So the water remains healed to this day, to this day according to the word of Elijah which he spoke. Praise the Lord. When God visited Jericho, the bitter water became normal. Praise the Lord. Every bitterness in your life as the Lord visits, they will turn it around in the mighty name of Jesus. Before you leave here tonight, you will not go back with any bitterness in Jesus' mighty name. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 to 27. The years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. Praise the Lord. A very classical example of this passage is the life of Job. The enemy, the devil visited Job and scattered everything he had. But when God visited Job, everything Job lost, God restored in double fold. God will visit you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. When God visits, his light is such that it overshadows darkness. John chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. John 1, 4, 5. God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning, we are the first day. That's Genesis. Thank you, man. Then John 4 and 5. John 1, 4 and 5. In him was light, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Praise the Lord. Because God himself is light. When he comes visiting, his light comes with him. So if there's any darkness anywhere, because light shines through darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. So wherever there is darkness, when God comes visiting, the darkness disappears. Amen? According to Psalm 18, verse 44 and 45, every darkness in your life, every stranger, Wherever they may be tonight, as the Lord visits, they will fade away in the mighty name of Jesus. 
When God visits, because of time I'll skip some of this. When God visits, it comes with healing. Praise the Lord. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. It's a, it's a story, it's a fairly long passage. It's a story of, I'll talk through it, my son. It's a story of the man who was impotent and had been by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Everything that he needed to do to get healed, he could not do it. But then God visited him. And by the end of that day, he packed his things from the assembly of sick people and went to the house. If there are sick people among us, the Lord is visiting you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not go back home with that sickness. In the name of Jesus. When God visits, he brings divine provision with him. Praise the Lord. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8 to 17, is the account of the widow of Zarephath. She had only one meal left for herself and her son. And after which, once they ate that meal, they were going to wait for death. But God visited them. And the last meal became the beginning of meals. And they never lacked throughout the period of famine. If the Lord visits you as he will do tonight, he will put an end to, in your, to lack in your life. In the name of Jesus. When God visits, he brings divine protection. Praise the Lord. Daniel chapter 3 verse 15 to 18. And of the cornet, flute, harp. Daniel 3, 15 to 18. Daniel 3, 15. Now, if ye read, be ready. At what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbot, saftri, and dosima, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast, ye shall be cast, Ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fury furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fury furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Praise the Lord. And to fast track it, the king threw them in fire. But the Bible tells us that there was a fourth person who was as the image of the Son of God. And because God visited them in fire, the fire did not burn them. It did not touch them. God protected them. Divine visitation will bring you protection from tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And he can, when he visits also, he wipes away tears. We have the account, we talked about this two Sundays ago. Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 15. The woman, the widow of Nain, was going to bury her son, her only hope. But God visited her and wiped away her tears. For as many as are weeping, the Lord will visit you tonight. He will wipe away your tears. And he will cause you to laugh. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now let's go quickly to the second outline. How, when God visits, how does he visit man? Because some people will be asking, how? Because we've described God that the heavens cannot contain him. He sits in the heaven and he makes the earth his footstool. So it's not possible that God will visit you and you don't see a huge figure. And people will say, I've never seen him. I've never seen it. How? Praise the Lord. He does it, basically we'll put it also in two categories. He can use agents. He can visit using agents. Praise the Lord. He can use agents, which include, like in the land of Egypt, plagues, fire, hailstones. Praise the Lord. He can use rain. He can use the wind. He can use angels. He can use the prophets. Praise the living Jesus. Let's look at some examples. 
Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 9 to 10. Ezekiel 37, 9 to 10. Ezekiel 37, 9 to 10, I read. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, So say the Lord, so say the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they live and stood up upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Praise the Lord. Many of us talk about the very dry bones in Ezekiel 37. But how did the dry bones come together? It was the wind. God sent an agent called the wind. And the wind of change blew. And dry bones became a living army. I pray for you tonight that that wind of change will blow over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And it will transform you to such a level that is well beyond your imaginations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Exodus chapter 14, 21 to 26. Exodus 14, 21 to 26. Exodus 14, 21 to 26. So, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were all we have a wall of unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in, and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's houses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, and in the morning wash, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drove them that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said let us flee from the face of, the, of Israel for the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians upon their chariots and upon their horse Praise the Lord. This is a story we all know very well. But I just wanted to point us in a particular direction. Moses stretched his hand over the Red Sea. But the Bible tells us that the wind blew and the Red Sea parted. So when the wind blew, it made the way for the children of Israel. When the Israelites had crossed, God said to Moses, stretch your hand over the, wind, the water again. And I believe also that the wind blew again and closed the water back and drowned the Egyptians. The wind of God that will blow to take you to safety, it will blow to embarrass your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Jonah chapter 1 verse 17. Jonah 1 17. Praise the Lord. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Jonah, God sent Jonah on an errand, but he went elsewhere. But because God is merciful, God went also to take Jonah to safety. He sent an agent called a fish. It was a particular fish because other fish would have digested Jonah. But that fish took Jonah to safety where God, where he could pray from chapter 2 verse 1 you see, to 10. Jonah began to pray to God and God instructed the fish to vomit him. So God used agents to visit people. My prayer is that whatever agent God wants to use for you, you will not miss that visitation. Sometimes, for many of us, that agent can be people who live around us like ourselves like our drivers, like the people we consider lowly and not important. Second Kings chapter 5 tells us the story of Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. But there was God's agent in his house, the maid. 
Naaman almost missed his visitation. But thank God he did not miss it. You will not miss it in the name of Jesus. Now, sometimes God chooses to visit himself. He doesn't use agents. He now visits himself. But the interesting thing is that because he's the king of kings, the lord of lords, he's the, he's the almighty God. He doesn't move alone. I remember our general Vasya told us sometime that let's look at the president of a country. Can you imagine our president, for example, wants to travel and he's driving himself alone? Is it possible? Even if he wants to go alone, some people will insist that we are detailed to cover you, to go ahead of you, to come behind you, to check the way for you. God does not move alone. So whenever he moves, he decides to visit. You see, he also has entourage of hosts that go ahead of him, angels that go ahead of him and around him. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. Stood by him. And when he, saw, when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servants. Praise the Lord. Abraham saw three men who turned out to be angels. But the angels were there because God himself, the host of heaven, was there. The Bible says, And God appeared. In the plane of memory. The angels were there because God himself, God decided to go. And the angels said, we must go with you. We must go ahead of you. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. And he called the name of the place, Mahanim. Praise the Lord. And then 24 to 29. The same Genesis 32, 24 to 29. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw, and when he saw that it prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Praise the Lord, up to 29 though. At the end of that passage, God changed him the name of Jacob, from Jacob to Israel. Jacob encountered God. But before Jacob encountered God, the angels, Genesis 32, 1 and 2, went first. Praise the Lord. So God, when he visits, the entourage goes with him. Let's look also at um, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Exodus 3, 1 to 4. in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, even to Herod. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Praise the Lord. If you look at verse 2 of that passage, the Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, how? In a flame of fire. So the burning bush was actually the angel that went preceding God. When God had gotten his attention, it was then God called unto him. God appeared and spoke to him. Praise the Lord. And finally, 1 Kings 19, 11 to 15. The, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocket, that the rocks were torn loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the quake, earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. 
When Elijah heard this, he rubbed his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And the voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God, God Almighty. But Praise the, the Lord. Of God. Let's leave it at that. Thank you. God bless you. Now, there was a fire. There was a fire. But God was not there. There was a wind. But those were the entourage that went ahead. But eventually, God came. How? In the still voice. Praise the Lord. Why are we taking this? When God visits physically, you are not likely going to see a huge figure. But you will see maybe the entourage will come and then God himself will come. So I pray for you tonight. You will not miss your time of visitation in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's look at a few examples of the people God visited. Who are the people God will visit? God visits all kinds of people because according to the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 13, the Bible says how God had anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. That he did what? He went about. So his sole responsibility is just to visit, to visit all kinds of people. Praise the Lord. So he would visit the oppressed. The Exodus chapter 3, verse 4 to 10. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw, now, draw not nigh, it out. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place thereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. For he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have, surely sent, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows and I, will, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land of Egypt. A, a good land and a large unto a good and a large and unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hamorites praise the, the Lord Paris. thank you man the people were oppressed in the land of Egypt for over 400 years but one day God visited them I pray for as many here who are under any form of oppression tonight the Lord will visit you. And he will bring an end to that oppression in your life in Jesus' mighty name. God visits the barren. 1 Samuel chapter 19, chapter 1, verse 19 and 20 and chapter 2, verse 21. They rose up in the morning early and worship before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah and Ekana knew Hannah his wife and the Lord remember her whereunto he came to pass when the time was come about after Anna had conceived and she bare a son and called his name Samuel saying because I have asked him of the Lord praise the Lord God visited Hannah and put an end to years of sorrow because she did not have a child God visited also Sarah from our passage in Genesis 18. In chapter 21, verse 1, the Bible says, And God remembered the promise he made and visited Sarah. Praise God. God visited also Rebecca. God visited Rachel. As many as are here who are barren or considered barren, or you are standing in the ground for anyone who is barren, the Lord will visit tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. God can visit and set the captives free. We read the passage before, so I'll just talk through it. Daniel chapter 3. They were taking captives from Israel into Babylon. 
But God visited them. And in Daniel chapter that, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And in Daniel chapter 6, Daniel was thrown into the den of the lion. But if you look at, I think verse 21, Daniel 6, 21, it says, God visited him while he was in the den of the lions. I don't know how many people here are held captive. The Lord will visit you in the mighty name of Jesus. God visited and he still visits people whose destiny is stagnant. People who are on a journey and go to a point and they can no longer move because for whatever reason, something is holding them. God visits them. In Acts chapter 16, 25 to 31, we won't be able to read it, Paul and Silas, they were on a journey. They were ministering, doing the works of evangelism, winning souls for Jesus. And then some devils came and said, you are going nowhere, and kept them in the prison. God visited them and set them free. And by the time, to let you know that God visited, by the time Paul was about to die, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. So you fulfill this destiny, you will fulfill your destinies. God will visit you. Anything and anyone that is limiting your journey in life, the Lord will destroy it. in the mighty name of Jesus. God visits the sick. Luke chapter 4, verse 40 to 41. Diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ the Son of God. And he, rebu and he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Praise God. The, that verse 40 says, As many different and diverse kinds of diseases, they came unto him. God visited them, and they all went home with joy. If you are here tonight, Whatever sickness, whatever name it is called, the Lord will visit you. And you will go back home with joy in the mighty name of Jesus. God visits those who labor in vain. Those who labor and labor and there's nothing to show for it. They wake up at 3 a.m. in order to start work as early as 5 a.m. They don't come back at 11.30 p.m. And at the end of the month, there's nothing to show for it. God visits them. Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 7. I will talk about it, sir. Peter went fishing. And he had toiled all night and caught nothing. Nothing to show for his labor. But when Jesus visited him, the Bible says he had a net-breaking harvest. If there are such people here, as the Lord visits tonight, you will have a testimony of a net-breaking harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. The man by the pool of Bethesda was there 38 years. His family members had forgotten him. They, they left him. He can't be well again. Forsaken. But one day, he, he got to the family house and they all ran away. Why? They didn't expect him. In any location where you have been forgotten and forsaken, God will bring you back to reckoning. In the mighty name of Jesus, as he visits tonight. God visits those who are mourning. John chapter 11, 35 to 44, the account of Lazarus. The people were already mourning. They had buried him. He was dead, forgotten. But when God visits, he brought him out from the dead. Whatever death has swallowed from you, the Lord will visit you tonight, will restore it unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's not all about negative things. God also visits those who are rejoicing. Praise God. John chapter 2, verse 1 to 11, was the account of the wedding in Cana of Galilee. The wedding is a good thing. People were celebrating. And Jesus visited them. Even people are here and say, things are going well. Why do I need him? You will need him. And he will visit you. If for nothing else, to take you to the next level. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now very quickly as we close. How can we activate this divine visitation? How? What do I need to do? What? Is there a formula? There's no formula, though. 
But if you look at the people who had visited and the way he visits, then we can bring out one or two things and say this is possibly, or these are possibly the things that will cause him to, to visit. First, invite him into your life, into your home, and into your situation. You know, I started by saying God doesn't need invitation to come. He will come even if you don't invite him. How much more when you now invite and say, God, please come into my life. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, If any man will open the door of his heart, what would I do? I will come into it. So if you will invite him, he will come. So if there is anyone here tonight whose door, the door of your heart is closed up to Jesus, you need to open it up so that I can come in. You need to give your life to Jesus. And in Mark chapter 4, we won't be able to read, 35 to 41, Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and there was Tom. They tried everything. You know they were fishermen before. So they knew what to do. They tried to stabilize the boat, but it was still turbulent. They had to wake Jesus. They invited him. Jesus came into this situation and he brought peace in place of storm. Please, it does not matter what the situation is, brethren. When you invite Jesus, you will calm every storm in your life in the name of Jesus. The second thing we can do is to show generosity, kindness, to be hospitable to all people we know and people we don't know, strangers and everyone. Look at that passage in Genesis 18. Abraham did not know those people. He just saw three men. But look at how he cared for them. He called his people, go and kill goat. He called Madame, please, make it very well. Just get food for them. Let everybody be well. It was after eating, before they knew the identity of the visitors. Care for people. Look at the Second Kings 5. The lady in the house of, of um, Naaman. If they had not cared well for her, she would have kept quiet. She wouldn't tell them anything about healing somewhere. Well, the way you treat people can activate divine visitation into your life. Praise the Lord. Then I want to emphasize this. When the third one, when you go extra mile for God, then he's also ready to go extra mile for you. If everybody is doing just enough, please do a little more. Do much more. Stretch yourself for God. And you see God will stretch himself also for you. Second Chronicles chapter 1, 6 to 12. offering upon it and in the ninth did God appeared unto Solomon and said unto him ask what I shall give thee and Solomon said unto God thou hast shown great mercy unto David my father and has made me to reign in his stead now O Lord God let thy promise unto David that my father be established for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people, for who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thy heart, and thou hast not as riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thy enemies, neither yet as as long life, but as as wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will give the rich, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of kings, none of the kings have had that have been before. The neither shall there be any after thee. Have Praise the Lord. When it was time to give offering, Solomon said to dinner today. So he just started. One, ten, fifty, hundred. He said, Stop. And I said, No. 1,000, are there more cattle? They said, no. More cow to kill? They said, no. Then stopped. He went the extra mile. And God said, oh, you won't beat me in this game. So God could not sleep also. God woke him up and said, tell me what you want. He said, I want wisdom and knowledge. You know, the assignment you gave me is too much. God said, okay, I'll give you wisdom and knowledge. Beyond that, I'll give you riches. In record, Solomon was the greatest king wealthiest. Praise the Lord. 
you go the extra mile for God, God will go the extra mile for you. You will invite that visitation. Praise the Lord. Four, praise God like never before. Praise God like never before. David danced and danced and danced that he was almost naked. And the wife was saying, look at you, king. You are behaving like a commoner. I said, I was doing it because of the one who, take the, who took the throne from your father and gave it to me. David, before that day, David had been dancing to God. He just showcased what he used to do. That was why one of the reasons God gave him the throne. A man after God's heart. Praise God. And finally, live holy. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. Can we have that also? Hebrews 1 9. Iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellows. Praise the Lord. God is holy and he loves righteousness. I said earlier that he loves, he loves fellowship. He loves relationship. But we only fellowship with people who are holy. So if you are unholy and you invite God, he will not honor that invitation. But if you are holy, you are living righteous, even without inviting God, he himself will come and make an abode with you. God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. He will keep you holy and give you grace to attract his attention in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So we have a few minutes for comments and questions, contributions. I like to ask questions if people don't talk. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. So digging deep is the only, apart from Sunday school, in the church, the way we can ask questions from the preacher. Praise the Lord. Uh, as in case of uh, Jacob, he has um, two or I will say four wives, but God visited him. And I don't know what category he is that uh, attract God's visitation. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The question is, Jacob had four wives. Why was he able to attract the attention of God? Please, can we talk about it? Anybody? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. It was because the promise of the Father was with him. Praise the Lord. Said the promise of the Father was with him. Praise the Lord. Any other one? I will expatiate on that. Any other one? Praise the Lord. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. to him. God came because visiting. He came Genesis visiting. chapter 32 verse 1 to 2. Because what we read here was that God, he, he noticed that God's presence was there. So it's not like God came directly to him and started speaking to him. You know we talked about divine visitation. It can come in different ways. Now talking about visitation also, the woman with the issue of blood did God visit her? She went looking for Jesus, but she could have touched and not reached out. So I'm, I'm trying to answer like this, that God did not come directly to him. He noticed that God was there and he connected to God. He's trying to, she's trying to answer her, but asking another question. Praise the Lord. Any other question? Comment? Okay. 
Praise the Lord. It's in response to the question, sort of. You know, God has a purpose, and there are people he selects to accomplish his purpose. Jacob was one of them, but Israel is also one of them. Because Israel wasn't necessarily perfect when God decided to visit them. Israel will sin, they will get punished, but God never forgot his promise to Abraham. So you see that God, when he has a purpose, will visit the agent to accomplish his purpose. So it's not necessarily that it is, the person must be perfect, but when God chooses, there are actually visitations that are negative. If God chooses to punish a people, all right, and has declared it, the son or the grandson might suffer the consequence. So God has a purpose, and sometimes he chooses to visit to accomplish his purpose. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's kind of related to the wives issue. Um, in the Old Testament, we see Abraham, he had more than one wife and some concubines later and some other of his children did the same thing. So isn't, it was not a sin then, right? Was that why God, because then it, it seemed like it wasn't a sin. They, keep, they kept doing it. It was a pattern for them. But in the New Testament, I, yes, it was a pattern for them then. So I'm trying to ask now, it wasn't a sin then. So we can't judge anyone or point a finger at anyone that he had two wives and he was loved by God, a friend of God and all that. Abraham had no several wives. When uh, Abraham married his niece, Sarah, praise the Lord. You, when Abraham was married to Sarah, Ketur, I mean, sorry, Aga was never Abraham's wife. There are baby mamas, there are wives. That's one on the side of Aga. Number two, Keturah was married after the death of Sarah. Keturah had six children for Abraham, but that was after the death of Sarah. So how do you prove that Abraham had several wives? Praise the Lord. You still don't believe that Aga was a baby mama? Praise the Lord. I think we need to distinguish the era of the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, we had laws, we had rules. And remember when Christ came, he said, it ought not to have been so. From the beginning, God created them man and woman. All right, the man will leave father and mother and cleave to his wife and they become one. However, because of the rules and the hardness of the heart of people, divorce was put in there, who were marrying multiple wives and concubines, they were traditions of men at that time. But God established his mind in the New Testament. And we are disciples of the New Testament. And we should therefore abide by the original intent of man as established by Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because of our time, I just want to, because of our time, just to admonish our younger ones. There's no gain, no benefit in multiple marriages. So to say it was a sin, it wasn't a sin. Don't think about it. One man and one woman. For a man shall be joined to his wife, and both shall become one flesh. Praise the Lord. I would ask a question as we close. Who will God not visit? Who will God not visit? A sinner. Okay. 
Praise the Lord. We have a I would like to hear the two opinions. Praise the Lord. God is sovereign, so He can visit any person He likes to visit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mommy? I said He will not visit a sinner because God will not associate with sin. But that does not mean He will not encourage the sinner to change. And that is why he, Jesus came to give us salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will be merciful unto whom I will be merciful. I will have compassion unto whom I will have compassion. Saul that became Paul was a sinner. He said he was the chiefest of sinners. God visited him on the way to Damascus. At the end of the day, Psalm 115 verse 3. Can we have it on? Psalm 115 verse 3. But our God is in the heaven. He had done whatsoever he had pleased. My prayer tonight is that he will be merciful unto you. And he will visit you, not with his wrath, not with judgment, but he will visit you to bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Please let's stretch out our hands to pray for the vessel that the Almighty God is used to bless us this night. That God will visit him tonight. And by the reason of his divine visitation, there will be restoration in his life. He will not depart from the presence of God. And God's presence will bring about grace, restoration, divine provision, divine protection over him and his family all the days of his life in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God, church. We thank God for his visitation today. Have we been blessed? According to the teaching tonight, his visitation has brought about freedom. He's wiped our tears. He has encouraged us. He's blessed us in various ways. So let's show gratitude. Praise God. It's time to give our tithe. Are there tithers in the house? Please come forward. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 that we all know we can even recite. God orders us to bring our tithes to his house. Please lift up your tithes and speak to God. Father, we thank you for the grace to obey thank you for your children that you blessed. We thank you for the grace to obey. Lord, you asked us to bring up tithes, all the tithes into your house that there may be meat in your house. We ask, oh God, because they have obeyed, meat will not be, they will not lack meat in their own houses in the name of Jesus. And you gave us permission to prove you when we obey. Daddy, Lord, we ask because we know you're faithful, that you prove yourself faithful in their lives, that you will keep and honor your word in the name of Jesus. Indeed, rebuke the devourer for their sakes. Let them be called blessed, even as you've promised, in every area of their lives, in all they lay their hands on to do, in their health, in all that pertain to them. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Please drop your tithe.
It's offering time. Offering time. I always say if it's blessing time, then we should be excited. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. God says we should honor him with all our substance. If he has visited us, has blessed us. I think it's only fair for us to honor him, to show our gratitude. Praise the Lord. Choir, please can you help us? to be here once again we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus thank you for your visitation thank you for your love and mercy we ask oh God that you accept us and accept our offerings in the name of Jesus you see whoever honors you you honor he said we should honor you with our substance and with the first fruit of all our increase that so shall our band be filled with plenty and our presses shall burst out with new wine. Father, this we ask you honor in the name of Jesus. Because we know you honor your name, your word more than your name. So please honor your word. Bless us indeed. That next time, oh God, that we'll be gathered here, we'll give much more. Because you'd have blessed us more. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord, brethren. Let's listen to the following announcements. Uh, tomorrow morning, there will not be a rice shine here. So tomorrow, if we have the holiday, we are to rest. Uh, we will restart a rice shine on Thursday morning. My sister, and praise the Lord. Let's continue to come because God answer prayers here. Uh, Faith Clinic will hold this Thursday by 6.30 p.m. Come and let's put our faith to action through prayers. And the God that answer prayers, we answer your prayers, we answer my prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. By the grace of God, the June Holy Ghost service will hold this Friday at the Redemption Camp. I thought you would give a clap of faith to Jesus. We love us you clap. Trusting God that you will plan to attend and you'll be richly blessed in Jesus' name. So let's be upstanding now. Just take a few prayers before we close. Our pastor 
uh, said a few things. He said, when God visits, he doesn't come alone. And he told us all the entourage. And from the way our pastor described it, you can see in that entourage, your blessing is there. I say your blessing is there. Because deliverance is in that entourage. Healing is in that entourage. Promotion is in that entourage. Prosperity favors the entire entourage. Also in the entourage are his flaming fire to fight your enemies, to give you victory. So I'm going to join me and pray and say, Father, let there be visible evidence that you have visited me. But our pastor told anybody that God visited, he, he, the life is transformed. He leaves something behind. But I pray for yourself, unless you don't understand that prayer, that there will be evidence that God has visited you. By reason of the transformation, by reason of the things that people will see, the changes, the good things that God would have done for you. Father, let there be visible evidence, oh God, that you have visited me and my family. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You will sit to God and say, Father, let your entourage work for me to bless me and to fight all my battles. Beloved, among God's entourage are blessings for you. Amongst God's entourage also are his agents to fight your battles. Let all your entourage, Father, work in my favor. Lord, let your entourage work to bless me. Let them work to bless my family. Let them work, oh God, to fight my battles, to defeat all my enemies, to make a way for me, to protect me, oh God. Lord, let your entourage work for me. In Jesus' name, we are praying. You will see Jeremiah cry to God and say, Father, stay with me all the rest of my life. I don't want you to be coming and going. I want to have everlasting fellowship with you and all your entourage. The Lord cried to God, you will not leave his presence. His presence will not depart from your life. Just imagine that his entourage is always going with you. You will always have victory, brethren. You will always succeed in all your endeavors. Lord, stay with me all the rest of my life. Stay with my family. Lord, let your entourage, oh God, stay with me and my family. Lord, stay with me. I want to have everlasting fellowship with you. Lord, do not go away from me. In the name of Jesus. Just one more prayer. Because our pastor read a passage which was quite interesting. Uh, when, when he read it. Second Kings 2 verses 19 to 22. Below verse 19 says, And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord said. But there is a problem. I didn't, I mean, I was trying to understand it. So how can you say the situation of a city is pleasant, but the water is bad, the ground is bad. Beloved, I don't know how people are seeing you. <laughs> they see you, you're having a problem, but nobody is willing to help you because they are looking at you, you look rich. <laughs> you look healthy, but you are dying. You look rich, but you cannot even pay your children's bills. It's a trick of the devil. You're going to cry to God and say, Father, Father, in my life, anything that is not working well, Lord, touch them. Touch my waters, touch my ground, touch my business, touch my career, touch my body. Let my body work well. Let this turn around for my good. Every misrepresentation of my life, oh God, to the outside world. My God, change them. Lord, change them. Every part in my life, every part, every command, Lord, turn them around. Give me reasons to rejoice, Lord. Give me joy. Give me joy. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, I pray for your people that every water that is bitter in their lives, every ground that is barren in their lives, Lord, let there become fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, give your children joy. 
Everywhere they have been praying, oh God, let them become joyful. Everywhere your children have failed, Lord, let them begin to succeed. Everywhere people have been mocking them, Lord, let the same people come and rejoice with them. From now on, Father, we will have fellowship with you. We will have fellowship with your entourage. Our lives will not be the same again because you have visited us. Thank you, Father. To you be all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. His presence will go with you as we go in Jesus' name.